Mr. Atherton, other than that fine microphone you're holding in your hand, you have something in the other hand that has been a passion project for about a year. We're here at the new, newly named WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca to make an announcement about what's in your left hand. Tell us about IMSA's 50th anniversary book. This book chronicles all 50 years of IMSA from its very, very humble beginnings all the way through the ups and downs, and as you well know, there was many of those, and brings it all the way to current, modern day, what's happening now. Uh, Racer Communications, Paul Fanner and his team did an outstanding job. I've heard of uh, them. It, it took over a year. They went out, researched and retained some of the best writers that were actively involved through that whole era. They tapped into the best photo archives. That was the biggest challenge. How do you choose which ones? 216 pages of wow. history uh, chronicles. Not all the uh, sordid details, but most of them. Of the many things I have enjoyed in looking through those 216 pages beyond the photographs, some of them I hadn't seen before, and I like to think I've seen it, all of them. I really love the choice of authors, and you hinted at something that we aren't just talking about modern folks necessarily who cover today's IMSA. These are the beat writers who are filing those race reports, writing those opinion pieces back in the day as well. All true. And, and some of the stories, uh, you know, I, like you, thought I had heard most, if not all of them. And when I read through the galleys, you know, the, the early editions, it was uh, more than entertaining to read some of the anecdotes and the things that were going on back then. Uh, it's, it's a worthy read, but I would say the pictures, uh, especially for me, you know, I have ADD, so uh, <laughs> the pictures make up for a lot. And uh, it's, I think for any fan of professional sports car racing, this is quickly going to fall into the must-have category. Okay, so like the entry list for the 2019 Rolex 24 at Daytona, we know there's going to be a lot of people who want to get in there. Not everyone can. <laughs> this book is not something where a million copies have been printed. So no. for those who want to get in on the game, tell us about the uh, limited edition aspect. Yeah, it's uh, all true. We, we made some conscious decisions here that we wanted to sell out. Um, not to create, you know, false demand or anything, but it, it's not inexpensive to take on an endeavor like this. And uh, there's 2,000 copies, and you can go to imsa.com, and there is a special section where you can uh, link to the process of acquiring one of these books. There's a couple of different options, some more collector's editions, you know, more uh, elegantly bound, etc. But um, that's, that's the best way to do it. Just go imsa.com and uh, it'll be front and center. This right here, I am convinced, is going to break my bookcase. I think I have every IMSA book that's been written. This is going to be the one that causes the crash late at night, but I can't wait. That would be a privilege. Scott, this is just a thing of beauty. And as someone who spends an obscene amount of money on racing books, I cannot wait to get this one. Thanks for making this happen. Well, you know, the thanks go to the France family, to the Bishop family that started all this 50 years ago. I think it's a testament to the foundation that was built in those early years that have enabled IMSA to survive, sur survive as long as it has. And uh, Mitch Bishop is here today. We, with, we wish John and Peggy were, but uh, I'm sure they're looking down on this beautiful day and uh, they'd be proud of this.